Hey and welcome back to my channel. I'm Matt, the printing nerd, and in this video we are completing the construction of the 100. Our goal for today is to attach all the electronic components to the frame, do proper cable management, and finally do some functional testing to make sure everything is wired correctly. So, without further ado, let's get started. Before we begin assembling everything, I like to walk you through how I prepared all the components. Let's start with the power supply. I took a standard power supply cable, removed the tail and stripped the insulation from the wires. It's crucial to connect the correct wires to the corresponding terminals for phase, ground and neutral. I strongly advise double checking the color coding of the wires before proceeding to test the power supply. Additionally, ensure that you have set the power supply to the right voltage for your region. I live in Germany, so in my case the correct voltage is 220 volts. Next up is the cable box. As you can see, I've added two heat inserts to fasten the top part of the box using two M3 8mm screws. Also, I've modified one of the feet. I have installed two heat inserts to be able to attach a clamp for the power supply cable. This clamp serves the purpose of securely holding the power cord in place, preventing any accidental tearing of the cable and minimizing the risk of electric shock or component damage. Moving on to the X and Y motors. I have already attached the pulleys to them. However, as you can see, I need to extend the motor cables. While many NEMA motors have detachable cables, mine came with cables directly attached to the motors. And since they were too short, I had to extend them. Next up we have the mainboard stack. In part 4 of the assembly guide we built the stack. We have already prepared it with clipper firmware and all necessary configurations for a basic functional test. Now let's move on to the Z motors. I have already attached the lead screws to them by using self-printed adapters. These adapters are not only easy to print, but they are also rigid and serve a cost-effective alternative to purchasing pre-made adapters. As you can see, these motors have connectors, so soldering a cable for them is not needed. Also, I've already pre-built the BMG extruder. Here, it's important to double-check the motor's orientation. The motor cable should face the same direction as the white Bowden connector. And last, I've printed two cable clamps that I will use for cable management. Since I built version 1.1 in this assembly guide, I've already added two spots to attach them onto the frame. Version 1.1 is currently only available for my Patreons since it's in beta phase. I plan to release this version in August of this year. But if you can't wait for this release and you are aware that these parts may contain errors, consider becoming a Patreon. Ok, after all the parts are prepared we are ready for assembly, starting with the Z motors. We move the print bed up, fiddle the motor stack through the hole and thread the lead screws into the connector until the motor touches the frame. Turn the motor in the direction so that the cable connector looks to the middle of the printer. To attach the motors we use four M3 40mm screws. After one side is finished, we repeat it for the other side. Next we replace the old foot with the new one that has the power connector clamp. Therefore we remove the back right feet from the frame, move the screws from the old one to the new one and reattach the new one to the frame. To power the SKR Pico we need to attach it to the power supply. For this purpose I've used an old cable that I had lying around. I cut it to the right length, remove the insulation from both sides and screw it onto the power supply and onto the SKR Pico. 
In the next step, I've attached the cable cage to the power supply. To do this, I need to remove all the screws holding the top plate of the power supply. Once the top plate is loose, I can attach the cable cage to the power supply using two M3 10mm screws. The cable cage is securely attached and we can move the power supply into the frame. To fasten it in place, we will use four M3 35mm screws to anchor the power supply to the frame. Now that the power supply is attached, we use our clamp to also attach the power supply cable to the frame. With the power supply in place, we can proceed to attach the mainboard stack to the frame. This can be achieved by using two M3 45mm screws. Ok, after the bottom parts are attached, let's head over to the top frame. Here you can see me fiddling around with the fan cables of the tool head. My fan came without plugs, so I had to attach new plugs to them. After that was done, let's head over to the extruder. The BMG connection plate will be screwed into the frame with 6 M3 8mm screws. Now that the extruder is attached, let's continue with the motors. For this construction, I've used 48mm NEMA 17 motors. The product page of the manufacturer says that they should be about 30% stronger than the motors that I've used in my previous build. So we might get better speed and acceleration values. Speed testing the construction will be not part of this video, but for sure we will drive this machine to its limits. So if you don't want to miss that, subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon. Now that all electric parts are attached, let's move on with the Bowden tube. To be able to attach the Bowden tube to the hot end, we have to remove the fan duct first. Before you attach the tube, double check that it's cut straight. To attach it to the hot end, remove the clamp and push the Bowden tube as far as possible in. After it's in, hold it in place while pulling up the holder and reattaching the clamp. The tube should hold in place. Check it with a bit of wiggle and when everything is fine, reassemble the tool head. Now that the tube is attached, we will use it as a cable guide. Therefore, I used cable ties, but be aware to not tighten them too much to not squeeze the Bowden tube. Speaking of cable management, let's go a step further. We straighten the X and Y motor cables to keep them organized. We used cable ties for that, which we hide under the extruder. To hold the cables in place, we use the printed clamp. To attach the clamp, we will need two M3 16mm screws. We repeat this process for the bottom clamp and yeah, look at those cables. I definitely have seen worse cable management in pre-assembled printers, so I'm pretty proud of it. After all the cables are routed down to the bottom frame, let's attach them to the main board. I won't go into detail which cable has to go where. BTT has really good schematas of their board on their GitHub repository. I will put a link to it in the video description. This one is the most fiddly part of the assembly. so. Take a deep breath before you start. I began with the connectors for the motors. After a cable was attached, I've put the rest of the cable into the cage and used the pins to curl it up so that the cable can't be pulled out. I repeated this for every cable. To not miss one, I went clockwise through the board. For cable management on the bottom part, I've used three cable ties that hold the cables in a big bundle. After everything is connected to the main board, let's double check that everything is attached properly so that we not have a loose cable. For me, this looks awesome. I can barely wait to test it. But before that, we have to do the belt routing. Belt routing is a bit tricky, especially if you have, like me, a fresh 5 meter roll of belt path. It's important that both belts are exactly the same length. My plan is to route one side of the belt through the gantry, measure the length of it 
and then cut two belts at exactly the same length. Routing the belts is quite straightforward if you start with the right belt connector. For me, it's the bottom left one. I fiddle around 10 to 15 centimeters of belt through the connector on the carriage to have a bit of spare and from there I start routing the belt through the lower bearing of the left gantry all around the motor pulley back through the left gantry to the left belt fastener all over to the right belt fastener and to the right gantry. At both fasteners we use the lower bearing to guide the belt. At the right gantry the belt moves back to the left side into the tool heads carriage. Routing the belt in the right gantry is a bit fiddly. Use a small screwdriver as help to get the belt around the corner. Before cutting the belts it's important to bring both belt fasteners to its minimal position. After that straighten the belt a bit on both sides and cut it at the spot where the right side has about the same length as the left one. Now unwind the whole belt and use its length to cut the second counterpart. And you guessed it, let's route it again. Now that the bottom belt is routed, we continue with the top one in the same way. But here we start on the top right side. To hold the belt in place, I've used two belt clamps designed by Zombie Hedgehog. I have put the link to them into the video description. I also used two M5 screws and nuts to make sure that the belt does not slip out on higher speeds. So that's it for today. Everything is built and it's time to test and tune the machine and see which speed it's capable to reach and if it's able to crush my speedboat record. But this is a topic for another video. Make sure you hit the like button and if you have questions feel free to write them down into the comments. I will try to answer them as good as I can. Also keep in mind that we have a discord channel. There, over a thousand builders chat about the 100, share their knowledge and are willing to help you with your problems. So that was it for today, stay tuned for new content and now get out of here.